trying to have in this house for so goddamn long, and we finally got them, and you're gonna fucking love them. This is Moose Creek Park, all the way from fucking New York. Give it up for these motherfuckers. Listen, they're on tour right now. They're on tour right now, so they're playing like every goddamn day. I want you guys to show them the most wild fucking show that they're playing this entire tour. Oh, can you do that for me? Oh, the fucking dance, fucking mosh. But don't grab onto this, and don't fuck with my water heater, but go crazy. Give it up for Moose Creek Park, everybody! Yo, so, uh, before we get started, we're filming a little documentary on the first tour, so if, uh, if y'all want to move up, get nice and close, make sure everyone can be in here. My friend Mo here is recording it, so don't fuck up his camera. We'll all be really upset. So, uh, Move Yo. closer, move closer. Heck it is. Let's go. I do not like personal space. Move your ass in here. This is not the personal space show. If you like personal space, this is not the place to be. Jerry, you good? Alright, this song comes out in July. It's called Soggy Bacon. So that's, we go. That's, that's kind of it. <laughs> what defines a tour for you guys? Yeah, I'd say like a yeah. series of consecutive, you know, show dates um, across a handful of different states with some new homies. Sleeping on people's kitchen floors and shit. Uh, Not knowing if you have a place to stay. Yeah. Parking tickets. That's fun. <laughs> Playing at sketchy venues. Oh, definitely. We haven't done too much of that. Touring's fun. I think that's a, the best answer. So far, at least. 
Uh, we've gone shows over that, that are aren't in our hometown. On the road, that's kind of a yeah. conclusion that we've come to. Like, I think we made, we did the math on like how long a tour is and how long it you would have to be to consider it a run. But I, you'd call this one a tour. This is a tour. Yeah. Anything more than like three days or yeah, four days yeah. is a tour. Especially when we're you know across the country, not anywhere near where we're from. So yeah. What's the uh, furthest city or town you guys have played at Blue Street Park? I don't know. I feel like it had to have been Boston. Well, now it's Richmond. Well, it's now it's Richmond. Richmond. Yeah, now it's Richmond. I guess now it's Richmond. I mean, before the tour, it was Boston, but now it's Richmond. It's pretty cool. That was a fun show. What's the furthest city or town that you played so far? Philadelphia. Wait. Well, no, no, I think San Diego. Diego. No, San Diego. Yeah. San Diego. San Diego. Well, no, for sure. How many is San Francisco? I'm pretty sure San Francisco is actually farther than San Diego from one time, technically. But uh, somewhere, yeah, somewhere, yeah, somewhere on the West Coast. Yeah, California. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys gone on tour before, uh, aside from Moose Creek Park? If so, can you explain your experiences with it? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, nothing of this. Unless you, unless you count three days. Uh, it's not a tour. Uh, it's not a tour. Not a tour. Nah, I mean, I was saying to Derek the other day, like, I guess because of where we are, we're kind of lucky. Like, we don't need to go on tour to be able to play to, like, new faces all the time. Like, everything's so close to us on the East Coast. Like, we can drive two hours and play in the Connecticut scene, or we can drive two hours and play in New Jersey, or we can drive two hours and you know, play upstate New York, so uh, we're kind of lucky with that, so um, yeah, touring hasn't been like something that's been, I guess, a, ma a major priority just yet, just because we've been working on that album. Being able to do one-off shows on the East Coast is super helpful. No tour history, but we've definitely done plenty of traveling, I'd say. Yeah, we've gone, so, I, I've only gone three. I'll start with the first tour. The first tour yeah. we went on, we just started the band, didn't even really have any music out. And we played, we were doing a, a run, like a six day run with Unamused Dave. Do you know him? You know um? <laughs> <laughs> and the first show, it was like right after COVID. So and I was in like another band that was kind of like touring. And so that's the reason why I have my van. So I hadn't driven my van. It literally sat on my parents' property for three years untouched. And I was like, oh, I'm just gonna go pick it up and nothing's gonna be wrong with it. And sure enough, we didn't even leave Springfield for like shit fucking fucked up on us. And we ended up renting a car and going and we missed the, f we, okay, so we missed the first show. Our, our van broke down. And then another local band had a van, and they're like, yo, you can borrow our van. And fucking we drive, it's a five and a half hour drive to Iowa City where we're gonna play at. And we break down like four and a half hours away from the venue, too far from any of us to come pick us up. And like it just sucked, because we were like just stranded on the road for like 10 hours, waiting for someone to drive from Springfield to Iowa to get us. Yeah, it was brutal. <laughs> but all the other ones have been awesome. Yeah, but then every tour after that, we're like, you know, we, we treat the van good, and she treats us good. You know, she she likes her she likes her back scratch. Uh, she likes a lot of things scratch. I'll just keep it at that. Uh, Andy does not like scratching her. Honestly, I hate that van. Andy, I'm saying it right now. An interview with everyone here. No longer allowed driving the van. I'm, uh, you're out of the thing. No Thank longer. You. Do not touch my Thank van, you. bro. I want, I've been waiting to hear that bro. since I joined Trash. Oh, oh my god. god. I do not like driving that thing. I scare myself driving. Bro, you freak <laughs> me out. <laughs> Every time I'm like trying to sleep, I can't, and I'm just, I auto, I just, there's no point. I just wake up scared and like, just pull over, bro. Just pull over, <laughs> get out of the car. No, bro. I, no, I can literally. My my first car was a fucking it was a clown car it was a Celica like you had I fucking drove this little mini fucking mobile bro I, we're, I just we're had in no a fucking huge ass awareness. van with that takes forever to slow down and you're like on a semi's ass going oh my god <laughs> I'm like dude oh my god slow down <laughs> ooh fucking. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, what did preparing for this tour look like? I feel like, I don't know if I'm wrong, but I feel like we did not prepare like at all. We kind of were just like, fuck it, we ball, you know? Like, am I wrong for thinking that? I mean, we prepared by buying like the pool. Uh, uh, yeah, just like yeah. trying to make space and maybe uh, minimizing how much we bring with us to a show now. Stuff like that. Most yeah. of it was pretty wing though. I would, I would agree. Yeah, I feel like we just raw dog this hoe. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I think. Like um, I don't know. We uh, obviously like Derek and I spent some time plating the show stops and stuff like that. Um, which started on TikTok. It, it, that's so funny because I never would have thought like that fucking app would put us on tour. But yeah, uh, we started playing it, and I guess like after everything was taken care of, we just had so much else going on. I, I didn't really focus on preparing for this tour, so I kind of was just like, fuck it, hope this works out, you know. We're, I feel like we're, we're way more prepared than we have been. This is absolutely my most like prepared tour. I feel like this was like, we, we kind of have our formula and our system down. And we've like... As far as what to bring, how to pack it, how much clothes to bring in order to keep space. Also, uh, gear sharing helps a ton because we can have our setup, they have their setup. We don't have to bring in a lot. Between eight people, we got two amps and a drum set to bring in and some merch. That's, not anything, so it's kind of nice having having that. How how did you plan for this tour uh, financially? Like, how did you budget out everything? Like, again, raw dogging it. Yeah, I mean, at least for me, I kind of like. I would, yeah, I would agree. I was kind of like, fuck it, I'm gonna, you know, just live off my credit card, I guess, for this one. I think we all just tried to save up a little bit of money, try to work a bunch of hours before, you know, going on tour, save up a bit. It was a little rough because, you know, whatever money we did have set aside for things like recording and travel expenses and stuff like that, pretty much ended, ended up all going towards uh, making sure that the vehicle we're using was uh, able to be used for the tour. If it was, that shit was last minute as fuck. It was, last, it was very last minute, um, and we kind of scrambled to, to get that thing in good shape, but luckily we did, and that, that's about where the planning for the tour ended, because we had spent all of our time making sure that could happen, so financially it was a lot of, again, like, night shifts and stuff like that, just struggling to kind of save up just enough to where, you know, you can afford that AAA membership. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, about, it's about what that's like. Yeah, so basically, like, you know, we have a lot of expenses, obviously. So, like, the main objective is at least, like, to where we can go out, make at least what we get, what we put into it. So, like, make our gas and, like, you know, Moose Creek Park's in the same boat. They spent thousands of dollars to record their albums, and we've spent thousands of dollars to make our music, and like, just to like, kind of like, pay it back for what we've like, already lost, and like, like when we come out, and like, yeah, we've made a couple hundred bucks, and like, it's, but like that couple hundred bucks is just going to pay the thousands of dollars that we've <laughs> already put in. Nope. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, well shit, we can go out, travel the country and do something that we really thoroughly yeah, enjoy exactly. and all we have to do is maybe buy ourselves some dinner which we'd have to feed ourselves we'd have to be doing that up, sitting yeah, at so, home bored so really, anyway yeah it's really just taking the time off and not working is the only real with the only thing. issue but even but yeah, it's more at it it's, yeah, it's so not a big deal it's not we try to go like every other month or so so it's like you got a month and a half to save I mean, we're only gonna be gone 10 days. How many, how much money do you need to realistically live on 10 days? And like, mm. this is the first tour where I'm like, shit, I haven't spent anything on food. I spent like $5 on a pretzel. That's literally the first th piece of food I bought, like for myself. <laughs> <laughs> how does going on tour affect your, your life with uh, work, family, and friends back home? 
be honest, I feel like, I don't know, fuck everyone else, bro. Like, these are kind of my only friends, so it doesn't really affect any, like, social life or anything. I spend all my time around these guys, so, like, they, this is my social life. Um, as far as family goes, like, I don't know. I miss my little sister and my dog, but, um, you know, we still keep in touch. Even though it's only been a handful of days, I'm not going to see her for a while, so I'm trying to get her something in every city we go to. That shit will be cool. I don't think it has any kind of negative room. Yeah, for, like, for me, I mean, all my friends are, you know, like, happy for us to go on tour and want us to go on tour. And same really for my parents. Uh, for work, yeah, it kind of sucks because it's like, get fucking yelled at when you get back. You have to work a lot. It don't affect me much. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my job, what, how many months ago? I don't know. Yeah. Well, we went to Sound Acres. Yeah. I used to work at Walmart and we went to go record the album and I got fired. <laughs> On the... Yeah. At least the album came out cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, at least that one. It was... It was it was basically like the day we found out that it's even a possibility we might take trips that last this long. It was kind of a <clears throat> battle to save up as much you know, paid time off and unpaid time off as I could. Um, just about got it. So, but part of it's uh, t definitely tough to hold the job while being on a touring schedule. I like with this tour at least. I didn't get any, I don't have any gig leave left. So I have to go back to work like the day after we get home. Otherwise I get fired, which fucking sucks. But I think I'm gonna call out anyways. <laughs> uh, I think that's the way. I definitely get homesick. I don't know about you boys, but I definitely like- I got kids that I miss. I yeah, I got a two and three year old. I miss, I miss them. You know, it definitely like, my, I have like a baby mama and stuff, and like we we're like have a relationship, and it's like it's hard on her because like you know it's very dependent on like we have kids, so like it's hard to like when I leave for ten days, it's like oh she works she works full time and I kind of stay home, so it's like I'll watch the kids all day, but like at least she comes home at night. But like for her, I do feel sorry because like shit, we leave ten days straight, and like she's got to like deal with the kids all day. Relentlessly, like they shit everywhere, bro. Like, you know, <laughs> every the day they shit. I've gotten of their shit, shit on the they fucking shit floor. And piss, bro. They're like, kids, <laughs> and sometimes they take off their diaper and they're like, "Oh, I like to. I'm gonna shit here." And then I'll go and then I'm like, "Oh, there's just a fucking shit in the hallway." And I get a photo every time. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I could. Right before we left for this tour. Literally, so Florence, my three-year-old, she's potty trained for the most part. Like, she she knows how to go to the toilet. She'll she knows how to use a toilet. And but sometimes she goes, hee hee hee, it's fun to take off my diaper, and goes into my studio with like all my like soundproofing shit and just pisses on a blanket. And like, and so it comes out. She's like laughing at it, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> square up if you want to do that. Like, <laughs> for uh, for me, I need Eric going in. I love touring. It doesn't affect me that much. All I do is work and play music, so. Yeah. <laughs> I think all our friends and family are pretty stoked that we even get the opportunity That's, to do yeah. it, so. Yeah. That's why I can deal with the homesickness, is because I know everyone that I'm missing is, like, wanting me to do this. Mm -hmm. So I'm, like, I'm obviously here for it. The uh, booking of the tour. How did the logistics on that go? Um, I don't know. I feel like Derek kind of, like, I don't know him super well, but he seemed like he was also just raw dogging it. Like that's kind of like that's kind of what it seemed like. Like every time I was saying like, hey, maybe we should play here, he'd be like, I don't give a fuck. Just if we play a show, we play a show. That's cool. You know, it's another stop on the tour. So like the actual plot of the tour got moved around a ton. Like we we're supposed to play in D.C. I think um, and Boston also, um, but. And both those shows wound up getting dropped, and we added, um, we added a, what, state college show, I think? 
I don't know, I don't think like, it was kind of just wherever we could get a show really. Um, that's at least how I felt it was going. You know, we tried to stick to DIY, overhead fees fucking suck. Um, you know, there's a couple of shows where we gotta deal with some overhead fees, but it is what it is, you know. Kind of how it was, it was just like he had a general idea of where he wanted to go and I was like, all right, I can do this, 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 and this. What else you want to do? Um, and that's kind of how that went. Do it as cheaply as we can, stay with as many friends as we can, or as many venues. And booking was just literally reaching people out on social media. I would see a comment, someone would be like, oh, you guys need to come to Virginia. And I would like go to that person and be like, hey, what's going on in like your DIY scene? Like who, where, what bands are playing? How do we get involved? Like what, like and, you know, through word of mouth, we just, Moose Creek booked a lot of like these shows up in like their kind of region. And like I had homies in the kind of Chicago and like Cleveland and Ohio and like Detroit and stuff that like I knew. And you know, if they can put and plan four or five shows and I can book the other shows, that way we can like take the workload off each other and they can work where they know, I can work where I know, and then like other than that, just promoting it and trying to get people like the people that we know and that like know us and want to come see us, hear about it and try to get them to, to come out to the show and give them a reason to want to, want to come out, you know? So how do you feel about this tour, like going into it so far? Honestly, I'm fucking stoked, dude. I um, I was a huge fan of Trash before we like even were going to tour together. So now like I get to see them every fucking night for 12 days, something like that. That shit's pretty awesome. Plus we're getting to play um, in a bunch of areas we haven't been before, and also see plenty of cool homies that we uh, you know we've already spent some time with in some of these cities. So. I don't know. I'm super excited. I was nervous to go into it though, just because, you know, we haven't been on tour before, so um, that's how I was feeling. I was, uh, yeah, it's cool, like, checking out different states, you know, seeing places you've never been. Meet new people. No. It also, it also kind of like, even, even though it's really early into it, there, there is kind of like a flow of, you know, drive, look around. Play a show, drive, sleep, <laughs> and it sounds boring, but at, at the end of the day, it's really cool and a lot cooler than anything I'd be doing on Long Island. Yeah, sure. Fuck with that. How do you feel about this tour in particular? I think it's going great so far. Yeah, yeah. I'm stoked. I'm stoked on it. It's just gonna keep yeah. getting better too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. We've yeah. seen some cool places. Met fucking awesome people already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys are like from here, so I guess it's not that cool that you guys are playing the East Coast, but for us, it's like cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I never. Yeah, I never ever come here. I run Orpheus Garden with my co-owner Spencer. <laughs> Orpheus Garden. Uh, it's pretty much a venue that we just started when uh, we moved into the apartment just kind of out of the spur tent since we're music enjoyers. Um, I originally started it as a, kind of like something that we're going to do something like small for fun with some friends and then it kind of got bigger than that and uh, it's been doing really well and we've been growing from since September and we uh, hit a thousand today so it's really cool. Um, I fell in love with the music scene when I was younger. Um, my, so, my pops used to run music, pretty much. He, he started, like, a music scene in our small town called Barn, and we ended up playing music in there. And, um, I moved down here, and I was just like, I saw the DIY scene here, and I was like, oh, bet, this place is like, they're doing this down here, but in their basements. And uh, <laughs> and I was like, they're doing up where I'm from in their garages and barns. Like, okay, cool. And I used to go to places like the Meat Locker up there and things when it used to, you know, be a basement venue. And so I come down here, and then I was like, I want to try that. Like, I lived in a really 
crappy apartment before and when I moved here I was like yeah I definitely want to do that here so I love that. We've been introducing a lot of New Jersey bands into the Philly scene lately with like bands like the Jetties and um, we have like Nonsense and they're from another venue called Funhouse and they've been kind of like supplying us with New Jersey bands and we've been introducing them around to other venues like the Haven and um, the Cribs and uh, Pillow House which has uh, been really cool because we've been connecting with other groups and broadening out our uh, roots into the Philly scene where uh, it's it's a growing, it's getting bigger and bigger lately. What impact would you say your venue has had in the Philly scene? Or, like we've been doing really well. We've been starting off pretty small. Um, we've kind of been really with like the Rowan, um, New Jersey, Glassboro scene lately, um, mixing into them. But we've been also meeting with a lot of Temple and um, UPenn students and Drexel students. Like we kind of have like a hive mind where we all have collection together. We all work together on making like uh, decisions on what bands to play around and um, what upcoming bands are coming up. Um, so we pretty much don't really have like a big part. It's more like we all work together as to bring bands from Midwest um, to all the way from like even Germany to even from Japan to We've had a band from Brazil and such um, at the Haven. We've had them play. We've had bands from New York play here, from Maryland, where we all just kind of collectively had them play at our venues and all work together to have them bring their music to the, uh, you know, to the world. What issues or challenges come up when running a DIY scene? Oh, usually it's like money. Um, it costs a lot to. Um, you know, get the lights in and get it looking like pretty and nice. Not a lot of DIY venues, you know, put a lot of like lights into it and ambiance and like music in the background and such or try to like really put much into the background of things. Um, but you know, I try to like, you know, start putting more into it, but it's usually money wise. Um, you know, we try to like, a, also with promotion. promotion, promoting is really hard, especially that if we have like bands that might have like a small follower counts and such, but we try to like get their crowd going by having them meet with our fans of our venue who started to fall in love with here and they can get their new fans from Philly. Um, our venue tries to promote to those who are, you know, kind hearted people who like to chill out, you know, <laughs> you know, have a little like side time, you know, a little bit of moshing and such. Some nights we have some cra like, we have some crazy nights sometimes. So uh, yeah, so it's usually just money. <laughs> like it just it's most venues. It's just like they try to like help up on money. So yeah, usually it's not like a crazy walk away because. We, I personally like to do this with a group, with a, like friends, you know, um, something we put together as well. Um, like working with my partner Spencer, they uh, have, they make a profit as well from it. We try to make something out of it, but usually we try to make doors for the bands and whatever we make from like our uh, DIY little drink area uh, is what we try to keep. So when it comes to door, we try to give it to the bands and like, you know, have them walk away with something as well, um, you know, rather than have them walk away with nothing, you know, gas money is important, especially with bands coming all the way from like Long Island, um, like the Moose Creek, um, I believe they were coming all the way from uh, Long Island, so that's like a far trip, you know, um, I'm originally from North Jersey, so I'm a little near there, and uh, I know how, you know, it's not cheap, so. We try to have a show like once or twice a month. Um, most of the time we have usually just one show a month and it's usually doing great. Um, we all work a 40 hour weeks, so we don't have much time here, but within our 30, uh, 30 next, next 30 days, 
Uh, we have uh, another show called With Cicada Theory and a few other bands. Um, and it's gonna be awesome. It's on the 31st. And they're coming all the way from Germany. So they're gonna be playing here for their tour. Uh, what is the most rewarding part of running a DIY music venue? The people's like enjoyment, the the fact that people are, you know, I'm coming back to this and like I'm the bands that I get to meet, the music scene, those bands like start growing like a fan base and going up and up and up. I'm like, wow, that's awesome. Like their music is getting out there. Um, I also just I love like the people that come here. They're always so like friendly. I've never had an issue happen here um, where you know, like no one's butt heads. Everyone's always been such a friendly character. Um, whether it's like from you know bands from all it doesn't even matter. Like it's just like they're always such <laughs> such friendly people. Do you have like anything else you like to say? Um, not really. Um, just that I just hope uh, that this like tour goes amazing and that like uh, this like this is really cool that you're doing a documentary on this and I can't wait to see it and that I can't wait to see this band these bands grow even more from where they were before. I'm excited for them. We're trash. We're from a long ways away. I didn't plan to write any of this, and I didn't think we'd make it this far. So I walked myself to the garage and breathed it. Car we got. I won't miss you. I don't have a place to hide. You don't have much money. city are or were you most excited to see during this tour? I don't know, did y'all have a city you were looking forward to? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, Cleveland. I mean any of any of the any of the new ones we haven't gone to. I was excited for Richmond. That was excited for, yeah, excited for uh, Cleveland, Pittsburgh. Okay. I'm excited for Detroit. It's gonna be a cool city. It's a cool city. Sure to get small. No Cliff Kings in here. Shit, Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cool city. Um, it's probably the one I'm most excited for. I think for me, um, my grandpa, who I haven't seen in like, probably like seven years. He lives in Detroit, uh, not in Detroit, he lives in Michigan. He lives like an hour from Detroit, but I'm supposed to see him then. So uh, I think that's probably the one I was looking forward to the most. Not for the show, but just because, you know, I'm excited to see my grandpa. He's a cool dude. He's just an old hippie. Fuck with him. I think Brooklyn. Yeah, Brooklyn. Yeah, I've never been to New York City, Neither so... Though. Same. Yeah. That was like so a big one for us. Also Chicago. I love Chicago. Yeah, this is going to be a blast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, what inspired you guys to do this tour? I think being at Sound Acres, I want to say that. Like, working with Gary kind of, I feel like he pushed us to be better musicians and uh, challenged us, challenged us to be like the best we could be, I guess. And I feel like he gave me a, a newfound confidence in my, my ability to play my instrument. Um, and with that, you know, we created a dope ass record and now like, I want to make sure we play places so when it's out, uh, people are listening to it. I think that's probably like, the main reason why I wanted to tour. Yeah, it would, it would just be beneficial, like, just try and get to as many new places as possible, play to as many new people, get the record out there. For a lot of people, I guess, like a once in a lifetime kind of thing. And having the opportunity to not only do it, but do it without having to kind of save up and spend, like it was just a regular road trip. You know, kind of treating it more like a really cool business trip. Uh, you know, suits and ties and everything. It makes it, it makes it a lot harder to pass on. It, make, it kind of makes you want to do it even more. Just because, again, you know, when you're when you're 47 years old at the heart doctor, you're gonna wish you went on that tour. <laughs> We just want to keep it there. We've been touring since we started the band, just keep it going. We've basically played the entire United States besides like the North Midwest and Pacific Northwest. So Yeah, this was just we wanted to we wanted to off. hit all of our bases, you know. So yeah. this was one of them. <laughs> yeah. Any personal connections to the locations in which you're torn through? I remember you saying something a little bit about your grandfather. Uh yeah. <clears throat> um yeah, no, nah, him and I, uh, we're, we've been super close for a, a long time. Um, and like, he's one of the big reasons why I wound up like getting as into music as I am. Um, every year for my birthday, since I was like, I don't know, 13 or 14, he sent me a box of his old uh, records that um, he thought that I'd like. And one year he included like, like Dark Side of the Moon. And uh, once I listened to that, I was like, wow, there's music that's good outside of like fucking Blink-182 and Self-41. Um, and uh, yeah, nah, that's when I started like really seeing how much I could do with the guitar. Um, so yeah, nah, that's why uh, I'm super excited to see it, man. It's cool for us to be bringing like the tunes out his way and uh, see if my old hippie grandpa will pull up to the fucking emo show. Yeah, that would be sick. <laughs> uh, Anybody else have like special, like, uh, personal connections to locations while the tour is happening? Um, besides, besides just like being really into like nature and stuff like that, like, Besides that, no, but it is always cool to kind of see different different areas where you kind of like always, like I always wanted to see a tornado. So it'd be really cool, <laughs> it'd be really cool if we were driving down the highway and a fucking tornado <laughs> ravaged the fucking Moose Creek taken out by a fucking Moose Creek tornado. tornado. That, that, that would be, you know, things, I, I guess I have a personal connection to the weather in that way. So, uh, I'm looking forward to going anywhere we can see a tornado. Turning the storm chasers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something along those lines. Also, I'd never heard a woodpecker before, and we heard a woodpecker in Virginia, so that was pretty sweet. That was pretty sweet. I'm into woodpeckers. Are there any personal connections to the locations in which you're torn through? Um, no, I've never, I've never been in any of these areas so far, so. And my family, I only know people through the internet, so everyone's a new person. Yeah, but like, I, I, don't, have, I don't know anyone here. Yeah. yeah. What are some goals do you have in mind, um, individually and as a group for this tour? I want to get through the tour, you know? This is cool, it's our first tour. First of many, for sure. 
Yeah, yeah, being able to see new places and kind of spread the music is always kind of the goal. Um, and again, as with anything, like that's that's always the main goal. Um, but at the end of the day, there's also that goal of kind of surviving it, you know, financially, even when it comes to like car stuff and not losing all your clothes because I already got started on that. Um, stuff like that, but mainly just to, again, kind of like have fun and get, get that experience and, you know, hopefully spread our music a bit and learn something the next time. Probably make some more connections. Not go insane. Make new friends and have fun. <laughs> yeah. Did that. that too. Yeah, <laughs> just keep getting better at what we're doing. Keep yeah. doing it. Just, I don't know. Have fun. Teamwork, baby. Oh, but what is your favorite part about being on tour? Definitely too. Early. Tour with Arlington. Yeah, so. that, that's what I was thinking too. What is your favorite part about being on tour? Playing music, for sure. I love yeah. playing music, man. Yeah, just playing. Playing music, meeting new people. It's always cool when we're like hours away from where we live and like people know the songs and like know the lyrics. It's an like, insane feeling. Like, yeah. I ne and that's, I'm very thankful for that. I never thought that I'd ever be able to experience anything like close to that. Yeah. How do you spend your morning or day as a band when you go on tour? Um, Apparently you can come to cheese things. I guess. I don't know, I feel like, you know, you got to see what's going on in the town. Like, what what is there to do? We only got one day there, you know, so might as well check out a few things. Like, when we went to Virginia, we went, uh, I don't know. Went to like a little town area. Yeah, I went to, I think it was called Cary Town. It's like just a little like maybe mile long strip of interesting stores and restaurants and shit like that. Um, that was cool. And then we went to like the Isle of... Uh, Belle Isle. Belle, Belle Isle, yeah. That one was nice too. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just I guess check out what's going on in that area. and. Uh, I, don't know. I think it's I think it's like a special like to be more specific like also to kind of like try to see or do stuff that we aren't able to do in our hometown and even more so when we start talking about places that are ten plus hours away you know being able to um, see things that you probably won't see for a long time again you know. but stuff like that I think is we try to do as much of that as we can and that even goes to food. We try to, yeah, I feel like we were in like, I don't know, at least like, we never really went to any funky food spots before, like before your time, bro. We literally just would be like, all right, cool, McDonald's. All right, Burger King, that sounds good. Yeah, all right, Taco Bell tonight, I'm with it. Oh, but yeah. now you, like, you're always like, yo, yo, we're in Philly, how can we not get a Philly cheesesteak? And I was like, why have I never thought of that? You know, or uh, the last time we were upstate New York, we were, we were like, yo, let's find a place to get some bomb ass sandwiches. The sandwiches were delicious, bro. So, in mm -hmm. Richmond, we did the uh, Korean barbecue. Oh, that was good too. That was good too. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. Usually I would just stick to like parks and stuff like that. Like, now we experiment with some foods and shit. At least, like, have like the memory of like a, a piece of wherever we were, you know, whether that's stupid, stupid video of like a cool sunset or a stomach virus after some bad food, like, whatever it is, just having some sort of kind of memory or recollection of where we were. Get to come in and do that for every city. How do you all spend your morning slash day as a band when you guys are on tour? Um. um it kind of depends, like last tour we were kind of like on our we want to do shit kind of arc, but like, fucking, we just been chilling. This one. We just eat breakfast, wake up, I, want, I like doing stuff, I wake up early, I can't sleep in, like my body just, I'm such a, such a routine person, like, even if I haven't slept a lot, like, 8 a.m., 9 a.m. hits, and I'm like, oh shit, fuck, wake up, I want to go do something. Uh, what does a rest day look like to you guys? You guys have a rest day on tour, right? Yeah. What, what would that look like for you guys? 
going to be mostly traveling just because of uh, you know where it lands. Like the day before we're Rhode Island, and then the day after that, our stay is Pittsburgh. So um, it's going to be, I think, what nine and a half hours, something like something that. Like that. Something like that. It's going to be so mostly, mostly driving. Yeah. But. Yeah, again, hopefully, you know, like, kind of making the most of that day and getting up early and getting up early. Have, having some time to kind of make it a little more than just the drive. Um, that's the goal. I don't know what we'd do with ourselves if we had a rest day without travel or a show. Probably smoke. They'd probably, like, yeah, probably a lot of weed. That's, a, that's about where that would end. But we're still learning. Steve <laughs> and... Uh... I think that's pretty like Driving well, and not as long as we're not playing a show, that's the rest. <laughs> yeah. On past tours we took our rest days a little too hard and went to six flags instead of adding <laughs> Yeah. It wasn't It was fun. It was, it was fun. worth it, bro. Totally it. worth it, yeah. Um, are there any specific things you do as a band to prepare for a show? Uh, just rehearse a ton. Yeah, and uh, like I don't know. We used to rehearse like a ridiculous amount but being that we play so many shows like you know two a week is pretty all right you know we used to try for three every single week but uh, Ryan lives an hour from us so makes it really hard um, but yeah nah just rehearse a ton and um, try not to suck I don't know my pre-show ritual is I always just try to like kind of get get myself feeling loose, like not not by consuming anything, but just like having some water and kind of like get, you know, getting hyped maybe to like the other bands that are playing before us. Um, you listen know, to Yeet. Trying to get, listen to some Yeet. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to the Monday Dunk. Yeah, to try to, you know, kind of try to get like the voice warmed up a little bit, stuff like that. Um, so it's really just kind of hanging out and checking out the other bands. And, Usually that gives us enough to kind of be ready to go. I warm up my voice, usually the band before it plays, and like I'll watch like the first half of the set, and like I'm like, okay, I have to warm up my voice. If I want to like, like last tour, I lost my voice like first or second show, and like I'm bound to lose my voice, but if I can keep it better the first half, and like consciously make that effort to like warm up, don't talk a lot, cough drops, honey, and maybe instead of like going 100%, like just like kind of toning it back a little bit on like screen parts and stuff and just like, you know, that's the only thing I really get ready for. Yeah, usually leading up to tour, we'll do like a few rehearsals and stuff. We literally um, practice once. Once. Yeah, this time we only did it <laughs> once because we've done this set. Uh, yeah, I mean, we had any times. Yeah. Two new songs to it, but the rest of it's yeah, what we played on the last two tours. Yeah. What does a uh, like a post gig look like for Blue Screen Park? Usually it's a party. I mean, you know, we sit we, we sit out back. You know, we kind of talk about how we did, maybe what we want to change, good or bad. You know, um, we always try to kind of like learn from from performance, I guess. But um, you know, a lot a lot of again, a lot of it's kind of like reflecting on it and being being happy that it happened and thankful and. Just, kind of trying to find the next step forward, like whether that's moving on to the next venue in, in, a, in, in the city or check out other places, make some connections, you know. Um, usually it's just um, kind of relax, hang out, and enjoy the rest of the show, most of the time. Yeah, for sure. I'm definitely with you on the uh, reflecting. I feel like immediately after every single show, we're always like, all right, this could have been better, this was good. Literally, like, even, what, yesterday, as soon as we finished playing, we were like, yeah, this, this, and this could have been way better, but the rest was all really sick. So, definitely lots of reflecting. Uh, what does a post-gig look like? Fucking tear, tear down. down. Yeah, tear yeah. down. Talk to people. Yeah. Lots of movement, thank lots you, of thank and, you. And then, once you get everything loaded in, you go back and do two or three idiot checks because you normally left something. Yep, that is the, so. the trash iconic idiot check. Yeah. We got Actually, do. that's from Jim Barry. Shout oh, really? Jim Barry. Dude, Jim Shout Barry is Jim the, Barry. the king of idiot checks. What do you think? How do you think I knew what an idiot check is? <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, it's not Passed down from generations. 
Put the legacy. Uh, after that, get all loaded up, and then you hit the road to the next city. So yeah, we Zaza. Yeah, we yeah. generally like to get going though. Like after the show, we'll like pretty much just like load up and like we'll speak for a bit, but we'll try to dip pretty fast afterwards. How does it feel to play in a in, in a show with a whole new music scene? The vibe with the music, it's cool. It, like. No matter what it is, as long as they're enjoying the music, it's always fucking cool. Yeah, yeah no, I'm with that. It's always cool, like, um, when we first started playing outside of New York, I used to tell everyone I liked it a lot because, like, you know, when you play at home, you play to your friends, sometimes a little bit of family, and no one wants to tell you you fucking suck, you know? So, if you go and play to people that have no idea who you are, um, if you suck, they'll, they'll tell you, or you can tell, like, people don't like you. Um, so I guess it's like you get an unbiased opinion on your music, and that's cool. I like that a lot. I agree. It's dope. Every yeah, place. awesome. Yeah. Every time we play a show, it's almost always in a completely new scene where we know and don't know anybody. I don't think I've ever known anyone. I mean, unless we're playing in Springfield, but like I've never, I, except for when we played at Will's Pub in Florida, and my cousin just like happened to be there. That's the only time that I've ever known anyone at a show outside of our hometown. So it, it just feels wild seeing all these people that we don't know that like they're are showing up for us. Yeah, they're like, like there to see us. It's just like, what? Like, Yo, we're friends on TikTok. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like oh, friends with a lot of people there. Oh, nice. No, that's very nice. That's fun. Man. <laughs> so my name is Josh. My name is Patrick. This place is called The Crypt. Uh, we're a little basement venue in New Brunswick. And uh, we've been running since June 3rd of 2022 and tonight was I believe our 15th show um I don't actually live here like Josh does but I help out around here you know I do what I can uh this this place means a lot to me definitely my favorite basement venue in New Brunswick uh, I do what I can I played here a bunch of times it's always a fun time here and uh gonna have a lot more fun shows here uh what is your role as a DIY venue in the New Brunswick I feel like when I came to New Brunswick, like, I, I fell in love with the community. Like, I, I started going to college up here, I made a few friends. I played in a couple of bands back in my home, grew up by the Jersey Shore. And let me tell you, this place is nothing like the Jersey Shore. The amount of people that come out to these, the amount of engagement with the bands, the amount of people that actually give a shit about the art, that makes me so happy. It's a fucking community, and I love that. But my one thing about New Brunswick is, uh, you know, when I, when I went touring, you know, down the East Coast and stuff, I'd see all these other scenes, and i meet people from North Carolina, and they'd be telling me shit about Philly. And I love Philly, Philly's fucking sick. And they'd be telling me shit about New York, about Brooklyn, about all the shows up there, and, you know, uh, uh, you know, everything from fucking, you know, from North Carolina all the way to Boston. But I would never hear New Brunswick. I even brought up New Brunswick to a lot of people, and they had no idea what the fuck it was. And, like, I don't know, my goal has always just been, like, I wanna, I, I, I book for this house, I book for the crypt, right? I want to get all these touring bands, I want to get all these people to come through, and I want to see, like, New Brunswick is worth giving a shit about, New Brunswick is worth talking about, because this community is something that has blessed my life so much, so much since I've joined it. It has given me a tremendous sense of purpose and involvement in community, and I just want to see it get the recognition it deserves, I guess. That's, that's, that's kind of how I feel about it. I would say the goal here is two goals. One is to provide people with a fucking excellent time, spectators that are, but to also provide the bands with a very memorable time and to give the bands that play here um, an experience that they wouldn't forget because everybody that comes here is very supportive of all the acts. And that's what I love about this scene is that New Brunswick is it's close knit and some may criticize us for that. You know, we may not be as big as Philly or New York, but you know, but if by virtue of, you know, it being Philly and New York, we're not gonna be as big as them. But with what we have, we come out and we support each other and we know each other and we have touring acts come. And even with the touring acts, you know, everyone is so supportive and everyone is so nice. Nobody, there's, 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 there's not a lot of like maybe there's the co there's the little band drama here and there, but yeah, everybody loves each other here. Like we, the crypt is a is a lovable place. You know, people come here to have a good time, 
we talk, we get to know each other, you know. It's a part of Rutgers, Rucker, you know, Rutgers University, uh, people from Rutgers, they see each other. It's like, oh, wait, you're in my class, you're in my class? It's like, yeah, now we're here, and we're socializing, and we're getting to, you know, socialize amongst uh, seeing great bands. And it's about the bands, it's about the community, it's about having fun. And uh, it's about getting outside your comfort zone and having a good time. In terms of the DLI community, like the broader one, I mean, all we really do is just, we, we, we take amazing opportunities to book amazing bands. I've had some great touring acts come through here. Uh, fucking Newgrounds Death Rugby was our first touring act. I fucking love those people. It's from South Carolina. Shout out to you guys, I love you. Um, we've had a lot of great bands. Moose Creek Park and, uh, and Trash just came in through here today. It makes me happy, it makes me happy to see. But in terms of New Brunswick, there was definitely a big shift around here, especially after the pandemic. A lot of the show houses were just like, it was just a place for people to go, a place for, you know, people would always been going to shows, to continue to go to shows. And I think the beauty of a few venues that have come around here, there's a place called The Laundromat, a place called The Big Dip, you know, us, who kind of started over this last year, didn't try to just cater to people who go to shows. We tried to make it for everybody. You know, I, I've had a lot of people come up to us and say like, oh, you know, this was the first show I've gone to and I go to basement shows every week now. And that makes me happier than anything else. Just knowing like that we can expand the community. Just knowing that people who had no idea what the fuck a basement show was two months ago, go to them all the time now. And that, that makes me so genuinely fulfilled and happy. I'm really hoping that The Crypt will be able to play a larger role in DIY. I'm really trying to branch out in the bands I get and the areas that they come from. And it's, it's been good for me personally. I've found a lot of really fucking amazing bands through running this, this house. And I could not be more grateful, but you know, we'll see. We'll see what comes of this, you know? There are so many great venues in New Brunswick. I mean, there are so many great basement show houses. There are the Grander Canyon, Laundromat, Milky Mansion. I mean, there are a lot of there are a lot of places around here. But and Crypt is is something else because you come here, and you're not just seeing the show. You're experiencing you're experiencing the show. And I feel like when I come here, I'm 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 seeing, I'm hearing what's happening, but I'm also you know, I'm really feeling like I'm feeling what's happening. I like like it's it's there's a specific vibe here, and it, and it's and it's magical. It, it truly is. I wouldn't come here every time if it wasn't. And um, I'm my band, Crown Euphoria. We we've, we've played here. <laughs> had to plug the band. We've played here twice now, and and every time we play here, it's 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 great. It's it's fantastic. We we love the people. We love Josh. We love Josh. We love Buvon Count. We love everybody who lives here. It's so it's just so unique, and everybody is so open and, and friendly. And uh, it's the perfect place to be. I mean, uh, where else would you want to be? Like, it, it, you don't, you're not judged here. You know, nope, nope, nobody's judging you. Uh, the socialization aspect, you know, we have people here. It's not just a show going on upstairs, downstairs. People are talking upstairs. You know, people are getting to know one another and people are feeling more comfortable with themselves, but also, you know, with talking to others. And I think that that's honestly just the best thing you can ask for at a, at a venue, you know, people having a good time just in every single aspect, not even just the music. We also want to create a safe space. The beautiful thing about New Brunswick is we have a lot of amazingly diverse communities and we want to make them all feel welcome and comfortable. I mean, at least for me as like a queer person, it's really nice to know that there's a whole network, that there's a whole community. If I can go to it, I can just have fun. Even, you know, say hypothetical, like, I didn't like, you know, seeing bands or going to shows. Just knowing that there's a party I can go to that isn't a frat party, that I can feel comfortable telling people my pronouns. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of a nice thing. I like that. So what issues or challenges come up from running the DIY venue? I mean, there's a lot. Um, especially, like, we have a pretty small basement for the volume of people that come through here. So there's a lot of logistical issues and me, Patrick, uh, Bouvon and Calum, who are the other guys that run this, uh, this venue with us, we will stay up until fucking four in the morning talking about, oh, how do we protect the water heater from getting fucking knocked over again? How do we get rid of the three inches of water that are terrorizing our basement? 
how do we hide the gigantic hole that we have in the wall from our landlord? Like, we, we've had to do that. We've had to do that. And it's fucking ridiculous. Um, but in a lot of ways, it's kind of fun. It's, it's definitely made our own individual problem solving skills a little bit better, which is, which is always a really, really good thing. Um, but there, there's a lot of uh, other issues. I mean, uh, I, I guess this is, this is at least bigger in my head. It's just I want to make sure that we get touring bands. I want to make sure that we take care of the touring bands. I want to make sure that they can actually sell their merch. I want to make sure that they can actually have a packed basement when they're playing here. I want to make sure that, you know, they feel like home when they're, when they're, you know, 500 miles away from home. And those are the issues, those are the issues I really, you know, really care about and I really want to focus on. And I think in the past, what has it been, past 10 months, some shit like that, we've done a pretty good job of it. Um, and I hope that we, I hope that we continue to do so. But also, if you ever come to the crypt, don't fuck with my water heater. I know who you are, I know who you, who's done it in the past, fuck you. I won't kick you out though, cause I love everybody, like fuck it. <laughs> so many, there's so, so many people here, it's four, over 400 people come here nowadays. I mean, even, even then, that's not that big of an issue. It feels like most of the people that come here, they know how to handle themselves, they know good etiquette good you know how boundaries boundaries are very boundaries are extremely important to us you know me and josh we talk about like making sure that people feel safe ensuring that people feel good people are having fun people are feeling you know like this is a place that they can go and they're not being judged they're not being you know weirded out there's nothing going on and so we just want to make sure like we, we weed we weed out um any people that don't fit people that are intentionally malicious or trying to do something we want we want good people here we want people who you know make others feel safe we don't want anybody here uh making people feel uncomfortable so it's a it's very big for us to make this a safe space to make this a comfortable space to make this a fun space so we host shows essentially every other week we were doing a little bit more frequent um a little more frequently last semester but it's hard. I'm in school. I'm in three bands. I have a very busy schedule. And um, throwing shows is mentally and physically exhausting. Uh, especially because I, I, me and Patrick run the basement. And the basement is fucking... The basement's cardio, you know what I mean? I'm down here, I'm sweating my ass off. Uh, it's great and I love it, but like... Uh, we, we, we switched it down to every other week. You know, we have a few weeks where like, if someone came to me with a bill that I just could not pass up and we, you know, we double book, whatever. I had this, uh, I had this booking agent come to me and say like, hey, I got a bill, whatever. And normally when I, when I get uh, DMs from a booker, I just kind of roll my eyes and just like, look, I want to put together the bill for myself. Don't give me a pre-made bill of a bunch of bands. I don't know, whatever the fuck. But they were like, hey, I got a band you might be interested in. We'd love to have at your house. And I was like, I was, a little, I was a little fucked up, and I was like, fuck it, I'll bite, who you got? And then they tell me, oh, Charles Irwin is touring and wants to play. I grew up listening to that guy. I fucking cried my eyes out when I was 15 years old listening to sad song about a girl I no longer know. So when I saw that, I, I pissed my pants a little, I'll be honest. <laughs> amazing, amazing shows coming up. I mean... Now let me tell you something. Spring semester shows are great. Summer shows though, the summer shows are a completely different vibe. Highly recommend coming to the crypt during the summer, June, July, August, you know what I mean? We have a spike ball that we have a spike ball that. We may or may not have a battle of the bands thing? That Maybe might it might happen. TBD or TBA, TBA and TBD. TBA and TBD. It, it, it might be kind of cool. I summer is completely different. You know, people are much more uh, out. You know, it's nice. The weather's nice. The bands are nice. Everything's nice. Everything's great. I mean, um, you think winter and spring's great? You know, come out for the summer. Cold. I'm not gonna lie, winter sucks. Winter's cold. And it's hot as hell because there's 70 people in the basement. And then you walk outside and you're freezing your ass off. Winter, I mean, come to the shows because we book great bands, but man, bring a coat. Like, bring a coat. Yeah. Crip shows are gonna be the best crip shows because every crip show gets better. Yeah. Just gets, it just keeps getting better. Does running a DIY venue make profit? Um, I mean, we don't, we don't profit off of it personally. It's something that, you know, any, any money that we get, we, you know, we pay out the bands. We, we have to cover a lot of expenses, like, um, we have to cover the bar, 
Uh, we have to cover, you know, the people who staff it, uh, or who we staff, the people who run the door, the people who run the bar. Um, and we we do we do keep money aside just as savings. Like uh, we have money set aside in case we get a noise complaint because I know some venues who have gotten noise complaints. You know, eight hundred dollar fines, and you know they and some of these venues have had to stop because they just cannot maintain that sort of thing. So we keep money over on the side for that. Any extra money that we get, like on top of all of those things, we end up reinvesting into. You know, I I, I got a new PA head recently because my old one kind of shot out. Um, we got uh, we improved our backline a little bit. Uh, our one roommate who does not participate in the shows, who is uh, trying to focus on his on his school and do his shit, we got him we got him a nice little birthday present with some crit funds, just because he is so good about putting up with all of this bullshit that goes on down here. But aside from that, we do not profit. Shout out Harry, we love you, Harry. No, I, I mean we just like I said, we draw in a lot of people, we draw in a lot of money. However, you know, there's so many things to be paid for. You know, it's nice people are coming here and they're and they're willing and able to pay to come here. But, you know, we're just happy to have them here. I mean, it's not it's not it's like Josh said, it's not about the money, it's about it's about um the it's about well, it's about a reputation, but we want a reputation to be being a fun place, being a safe being a safe place. I feel blessed that I can even be a part of it, you know what I mean? It's 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 great, you know. Turns a profit but also turns the people here, and that's what matters. I mean, the one thing I, I will say about that, just in addition, is pretty much everyone who's walked in here that has a bit of creep that we've had to throw out, I would consider a very good friend of mine. I've met some of my best friends in my life from working at this place, and even though a lot of the people really don't charge anymore, I'm still gonna, you know, they, they still end up paying, and I would feel like a horrible fucking person if their five dollars went into me getting a PS5 or some bullshit, because like, it's their money. We, we wanna reinvest it back in them, you know what I mean? We wanna use that money to make their time better the next time that they come back, you know what I mean? It's like when you pay your five dollars admission to the crypt, consider that an investment, so that the next time you come here, it's gonna be even better. The more than, more than any money could buy, the relationships and friendships that you form with people here, have been so rewarding. It's the real profit, guys. It's the real profit. The real, the, may, maybe the real, maybe the real, the real profit were the friends we made along the way. No, <laughs> I mean that, as great as money is, you know, the the relationships that you form at these places and the memories you make. I mean, like it's a generic thing to say, but we're college years. You know, we're living the best years of our life, and what place to be in those best years than the crypt? I mean, I've been running shows, ran shows out of my mom's basement since I was about 16 years old. I had a band in high school called Cellophane Daydream, and we wanted to give ourselves a platform because we were a very weird sounding grunge band, I guess. I mean, by the Jersey Shore, there's not a lot of places to play, so we were like, no, fuck it. We're gonna throw our own shows, and we worked with some other little bands and stuff. We have to hide all of the alcohol from my mom, bless her soul. Uh, mom, if you were watching this, that didn't happen. We didn't do that. No, so uh, after you know, after after lockdown and everything, we stopped doing those shows. Um, I, I I started going to Rutgers, and I started going to a couple shows around here. And I I found myself in this one place called Ghoul Lagoon. Um, it's run by you know some of my friends David and Brandon, uh, who are also members of one of my bands. And they inspired the fuck out of me. I I saw what they were doing. They would book these amazing shows and have these great bands all these great people would come through and through them i just saw this community that that, that was my like introduction to like new brunswick music and i was just like this is fucking incredible like i knew diy was like a thing you know i i i, I loved a bunch of diy bands i was a big band camp head but like I didn't realize I didn't realize what it was until I was like there. Until I like when I saw all of these bands that you know I, I, I listened to on Bandcamp. I listened to whatever, just like right in front of me, just doing their thing. Just all these people like so engaged and really giving a shit about the art. I'm like, I want to do that. Like that's beautiful. So you know I, I got this house. I moved in here with uh, with Buvan and Callum. Um, was trying to convince them like, hey, this is this is sort of a fun thing. Like you guys would like doing this. Let me throw one show and we'll see how it goes. And it was over the summer. And um, I, I, I was coming back from a tour with one of my bands, and we threw something in the basement, and it was fun as hell. You know, these these guys who had maybe gone to like 
one or two basement shows in their lives before were fucking moshing their asses off. They were getting so drunk. And I, I, I knew it. I could see there's one point in the mosh pit where one of my friend's bands, uh, Hillview 73, where I saw the biggest smile erupt on my, my, my friend Callum's face, my housemate Callum's face. And I'm like, in that moment I knew, this is it. We're sold. And they came to me the next morning and they were like, all right, when's the next one? Uh, and that was just during the summer. We'd probably have like 50 to 60 people per show, something like that. And then by the time that, you know, the semester came around, 100, well, 50. By the time the middle of the semester came around, 200, 250. Halloween, 300, 350. January. January. <laughs> yeah, then we, came, then we came back after winter break and then we had 420 people in my fucking house. And that's kind of where we went to, so. My story's a little different. I mean, I've been in a band, I've been in the same band for about four years. I came to Rutgers uh, in 2021, and I was like, I gotta get involved. I gotta get involved with the music scene. I, I gotta see what's up. So I was like, let me join a band that's already established. So I joined this band called Pillowind. And um, Claire and David, who are members of the band, they were within uh, Ghoul Lagoon. They were in the... As Josh mentioned, a venue called Gula Goon. Gula Goon was so crazy. I only went to one show there, and it really changed my perception of shows, how a show could be both about the music, but also about just the party and just having fun. Like, it's, it's, it's so many things at once. And um, I went to Gula Goon once in, in tw uh, late 2021. I was like, man, I got to keep going to shows. So I went to Roadhouse. You know, God bless Roadhouse. doesn't exist anymore. I went to Grander Canyon. I went to... Uh, I went to the litter box. I played at the litter box. I played at all these places. And then I went to, it wasn't until uh, August, late August, I went to the crypt and I came to the crypt and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this is different than every other venue I've ever went to. I saw three question marks. I thought I saw Heathmonger, a lot of like, you know, staples of the community. And I thought to myself, I was like, I really want to get in on this. And I've known Josh for a while and I wanted to get, you know, I, lo I love Josh now. I wanted to become better friends with Josh. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to help help out here. I mean, and and, and like I, I never imagined myself doing so, but I mean, here I am, and and I, I and I couldn't imagine myself being anywhere else. It took it took a while for me to really get adjusted to the scene, but I think like um, the crypt just helped me because yeah, pe people here. They'll just come up to you. They'll start talking. You'll be like, "Hey, my name is this. My name is this." I'll be like, "Oh, okay." And I can't help but like, you know, make these connections. And like, starting to help out here the past summer has really uh, helped me form a deeper connection with the scene and to help me feel form a deeper connection with my own band. I'm not in Pillow anymore. It's just my band. But we've took a lot of lessons, you know, from playing around here, and I took lessons from my other band. I apply them to helping out here, you know. Just as I play with my band and I'm worried with my band, like, oh, how can we make this set fun? How can we make playing here fun? With the crypt, I'm like, oh, how can we make this fun? Like, what, what can we do to make this more, um, what can we do to make people more engaged? It, it's it's great. It's just, it's just great being able to help out here. It's great being able to, you know, it's great that I became a part of, you know, the house. I want, when people talk about DIY in the Northeast, I want them to talk about New Brunswick, along with Philly, along with Boston, along with New York. I want to hear, I want to hear New Brunswick being represented in that way. Um, and I am just waiting for the day that I am halfway across the country and someone will be telling me about the, the, the town that I had spent so much of my 20s in. That's kind of what I want. Closing thoughts about the crypt? Thank you so much to Bouvon. So much to move on, Jesus Christ. So much to Callum, so much to Patrick over here. We can Alex Blandon, to Roommate Dice, to Harry, who does not participate, but goddamn, I love that he lets us do this. Shout out to Trent. Shout out to, uh, to Amr, king of the mosh pits. Sadly could not be here tonight. Shout out to everyone who has made The Crypt as amazing as it is. The Crypt would be nothing if it were just me, Patrick, Booth, and Callum. The Crypt is... The crypt is every one of us, it's, yeah. This song just came out, so if you like it, go listen to it. It's called OK Dylan.
Um, how does the music scene change from region to region? In some spots, you know, there might be kind of a culture of here's this venue, this place is a cool place to hang out, it's a cool way to spend your Saturday night, so we're gonna go, and hopefully the bill is cool. And in other cities, there's more of kind of a culture of people being really into kind of like the local scene and supporting certain people and going to certain places. Um, so it varies a lot, again, city by city, but pretty much all of them, for the most part, have been, everything's been pretty positive, like, we haven't really noticed I, at least I haven't noticed any kind of negative aspects of any certain city. There's always, there's always a fair bit of kind of like what you know about the scene, how big it is, how clicky it is, stuff like that. But for the most part, at least in our experience, it's, it's usually a good time. You can, again, you can kind of tell like why are certain people here, like what, what made them come here, how into the scene are these people, uh, how genre specific is this show. Besides that, Stuff doesn't tend to vary too much. It's usually again pretty pretty similar locations for the most part. I feel like everyone honestly like there's like the principles of like respect the house, like DIY, it's always like the community is always like really like about supporting the bands and the touring bands. Mm -hmm. Everywhere we've been, everyone's you know, with the shits of like, okay, touring bands, we wanna make sure like they have the best turnout. We want to make sure people stay there and like that's one thing I've noticed like in this type of genre community is always like super cool about taking care of people and like when people like come to Missouri or like I try to help out as many bands that help us out be like okay well next time you try to come to Missouri or the Midwest I, I got we, I could help you book in several different cities or give you at least leads on where to book and bands to book and like the how to get connected so it's like you know it's like helping like bands out and expecting to maybe one day like return the favor. How does your band handle stress when problems arise? <laughs> Vinny gets really bipolar and completely you know what, that he wants to give up. <laughs> Fuck you, bro. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's hard sometimes. <laughs> you make a lot of sacrifices <laughs> and sometimes it doesn't feel worth it. So, it's rough. I overreact on occasion. <laughs> I'll admit that. We, you know, we, uh, we all kind of throw a lot at it, and it's really kind of a uh, do it or bust kind of situation. So, um, you know, when, when something stressful does happen, you know, we, we kind of, we, we maybe have a minute or two where we kind of freak out. Usually, really quickly, the focus shifts to fixing the problem or making something else happen, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, some, like, one or two of us usually kind of step up and just start the road to figuring shit out. How does your band handle stress and problems that arise on tour? <laughs> Uh, we've not well. <laughs> we don't fucking beat each other up, but we do get grouchy with each yeah. other, bro. And yeah. all of us, it like, happens. to say none of us are, to say any one of us is unguilty, that would be a lie. Yeah. It happens yeah, to every perfect. one of us. But I think at the end of the day, we we all love we each all, other. Yeah, we all know we, we're boys. Like, we, we, we know. We let it roll off our shoulders exactly. at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, we get, we're here to... We're all here for the same mission, so it's for pretty real. easy to get along Anytime once you, you realize spend, that. Anytime you spend like long periods of time, you're gonna get fucking people annoyed with like, people in a band yeah. for long periods. It's just time bound down. to happen, but it's worth it. Yeah, it, it's Absolutely. never ever come to a point where like I'm not gonna be fucking friends with no. douchebags anymore. No, it's never even come close to that. No. How does uh, each band member balance their needs while on tour? I guess trying try to be respectful of each other, obviously. Just when you're trapped in a car with people for a while, it's pretty easy for stuff to breed, I guess. Like I, I don't think it's been a really a huge problem at all or anything like that. But um, well, my needs are balanced now that I no longer have to drive the van. <laughs> I just, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about y'all. Y'all got to keep going on that one. That's that's how I go. <laughs> I don't know. We drive in shifts, take turns sleeping. That way everybody can get it, the rest they need. If somebody's falling behind on rest, we try to get that to them. 
Um, the van's comfy. We. Yeah, I know, like, especially with the, we didn't bring a photographer along this time, so with the one less uh, body in there, like, like every oh. seat's a bed, mm -hmm. so it's fucking nice. It's it's pretty easy to balance I th needs, I think. I, I don't think we struggle too much with that. We're all pretty good about not having to piss all the time. Like, yeah, yeah like, I'm so, I, like, for four people, like, we're real good at holding that in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll try four or five hours before stopping. Every like time. you hyped it up to be where like you were like gonna have to stop like every hour, but like you don't at all, dude. There, there was one tour we did that I felt like I was stopping a lot because I had to piss. And I was driving home from somewhere. And I was just you guys were asleep and I was literally pulling off on the shoulder of the road pissing. Real quick. No, I do remember that. I remember that. Derek's the type of dude piss on pissing the wall, in, pissing a I'll ditch, piss pissing a chip bag in the back seat of the <laughs> van and did it everywhere. I thought about one time I had a PVC pipe, like one of those little connector pieces. I wanted to like see if I could maybe like hose it out the hose window. it out the snake it out the window, you know? And like piss in the you know. The piss machine. There. One time I tried pissing in a bag, a bag of chips. <laughs> it did not work. Got everywhere. I was covered in piss. <laughs> Dude. Uh, things that go on in the garbage truck are sometimes <laughs> fucking unfortunate, <laughs> to say the least. What determines if a show or a tour was successful? Uh, I think it's a combination. Of things. I think it's as most. long as there's like not nobody at the show is like I'm okay with like a smaller show not being a ton of people as long as people are like into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that, people being into it is a major, yeah. major. Yeah. You could have it's, a fucking crowd, a hundred people who are just standing there bored as fuck, have no fun. But if you have like a room full, of like just like five, ten people, and they're all going crazy, I'd much rather do that. Yeah. That Honestly, in fun. the band I played before, like I was used to going to like on tour and playing to like five people, and like I don't think we've we've only done that once on like four tours, like to where we had like a really like. No one came, and it was like, oh shit, like this yeah. sucks. <laughs> that was the like show every show has been like, okay, yeah, there's thankful. 20, 30 people here at least, and like those 20 or 30 people are like here because they want us to be here, and like they like it's it's a, yeah, it's always sick when you show up, even if there's not like a huge turnout. Yeah, if people are coming out to see you. I'd call that a success, you know. Yep. Yeah, I as long as you're out there doing it and having fun, that's what it's about. Yep. Any last thoughts or prayers or things you want to say? It takes. You could take the red out of any. Wait, wait, wait! You could take the boy out the hood, but you can never take the hood out the home. It takes. <laughs> <laughs> if you take one wipe, you'll never know if you need two. But if you take two wipes, you might find out you only needed one. <laughs> yeah, that shit. Yeah. Sweet. Um, do you guys have any last minute things to say before I wrap it up? Damn, seeing his studio made me be like, oh, I need a drum room. I just be recording shit in my bed, my drums in my bedroom, and like, they sound good, but I bet shit in there sounds. Dude, awesome. that studio is amazing. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Hey, we're pretty good, honestly. Sweet. Oh, yeah. Cool. Oh, are we all heading out to Jersey? Or New Brunswick? Yeah, yeah, is it Brunswick? Right? Yeah, Brunswick. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, what brought me to the venue today was uh, Trash, specifically. I've been following them for like a year. Huge fan. Been waiting for the East Coast tour forever. And that's why I came out. I had to come support. I'm involved in the music community. I do a lot of booking and promoting currently. I used to run a music venue called Crunch House and had shows there and was running that for about a year before I unfortunately closed it down. But yeah, just being involved, bringing everyone together and just spreading the word for all the bands. Dedicated a lot of my time to making sure everyone can be involved. These bands can get the platform that they deserve. Um, you really just have something that I have a platform that people can use their passion to bring people together and that just means a lot and 
just got to do everything I can to hold that together. The issues and challenges with running a DIY venue. What isn't there? That's a challenge. Um, the money's not there. Um, like running it itself is like you're very much relying on like the community and your friends and not every show you're gonna have people helping you out or have the best sound or have the best turnout but when it's good it's great and when it's not good it's still a good time it's never not fun doing this but it's a it's a challenge it's a lot but I would never trade it for anything in the world how did I find myself in that position? Well, with Crunch House specifically, I was asked to be security, and it is a DIY venue, and within like two weeks, I was running it, and then just, you know, took it over, and just randomly, by chance. It was the best. The music, the people, the community, the absolute love and support that I received from everyone is insane. Um, like I said, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, it is my everything, and if I could go back in time and like have the opportunity to change something, I wouldn't. I'd go through the struggle again. I'd go through the challenges. I'd go through the drama. Like it's nothing was better. Um, the Connecticut DIY scene is very all over the place. It pops up it goes hard it dies out it pops up again um houses get shut down houses start up um and it's just like the people are unique um i've seen the places in mass rhode island new york i mean i went to canada like connecticut's just connecticut it's definitely not the best but it's it's something i still love it the expectations to go to a Connecticut show, man, all over the place. You're going to go to some places, it's going to be a completely different scene, completely different crowd, and it's 15 minutes away from a different venue. I mean, it's all over the place. It's huge, it's small, it's non-existent, it's thriving. It's, it's hard to even pinpoint it, and people don't even know about the scene, and then there's people who swear by the Connecticut scene. It's, it's nuts. So owning Crunch House, I had a variety of bands come through from all over the country, um, out of the country, and I treat everyone with love and respect that, I, that have come through, that have respected me and my venue, and do my best to branch everything out. There's a lot of bands that haven't had the platform yet, haven't had the chance to meet other bands, to have opportunities at other places. So I do everything I can to bring bands that don't know each other, haven't played with each other, bring them together, try to put them on bills and uh, have them play shows together. And it's just trying to bring everyone together is the most important part about keeping this all alive. And if all of us don't do that, it's gonna die out very soon. It, it is what it is. I love it. I fucking hate it. Um, the bands are great. Some of them suck, but you know I still love them. It's not about the quality of the music. It's about the it's about the memories behind it. Crip, how do we find out? We come here all the time. We're here every weekend. We love the Crip. We love the music. We love the moshing. Yeah, we we love moshing. You know, we we from you know Mason Girls. We go to art school. You know. We love to mosh. <laughs> Crypt is Crypt is great for moshing. We don't we follow some bands, but like we, we don't really care who's here. We know it's just gonna be a good time. Yeah. Yeah, we know it's gonna be a great time, you know. We love having fun. Yeah. We love moshing. We love getting crazy. We love getting lit. We fucking go crazy. Ah! <laughs> go crazy, bro. We go crazy. You already know what's happening. We lit. We out here. New Brunswick, New Jersey. You know what's going on. Straight from Florida, Miami. Albany. Albany. We, we are from out of state everywhere. We come from yeah. everywhere just to see the crib. And they always have good music taste. Always have so good music. So we always just come to see the bands they pick because we love the rock, the R&B, the metal. We love it all. Yeah, we love it yeah. all. We love it all. We have plenty of lit. Um, we go to like Davy Jones a lot, and we go to the Crypt, we go to a lot of the basement shows, and honestly, like, it's all like my scene, like, it's all what we listen to, it's all pretty great, all the people here in Rutgers are so talented, like, it's crazy, like, they're all so talented, you can get crazy to anything down here, yeah. Crazy, yeah, fact, you know, I love the musicians, you know, they're great, 
They're fucking You're It's a musician. fucking I'm a musician yeah. As a musician Coming from a musician The music is great I love the self-expression You know Everyone's expressing themselves That's yeah. great I love to see it I love to see it Yeah I love t- to see expression through art. <laughs> it's a great thing. It really is. It really is. We're both artists. How did you enjoy the show? Like, what band was your favorite scene tonight? We came pretty late, so we only saw the last band playing. Or the last two, actually. The last two. We were there during the intermission. But... Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, we saw Moose Street Park. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the trash. That we okay. saw those two. Yeah. yeah, we're not, like... I'm familiar with some of the bands, not all of them, but I've heard of those two. And we came here tonight because we wanted to hear some good ass music and it was good as fuck. And we were able to get really, really, have a lot of fun. We got really lit. We did have a lot of fun. I was getting thrown around in the fucking basement. It was crazy. I've lost crazy. so many necklaces here, bro. I lost so many necklaces. In the best way possible. It's worth getting lit. It's worth. <laughs> It's worth coming here. It's worth parting that's for. You know, that's why we that's come. We that's why we're here. We're here for the party. Yeah. We're here for the great time. Yeah. You know, the life memories. is all. It's all about having fun out here. Mm-hmm. Life is about having the fun. It's like what? Do you, <laughs> what are you here for if you're not having fun, yeah, for right? Real. For real. What, right? Yeah. If you're not having fun, why are you here? At the crypt. At the crypt. At the crypt. We're live. Fucking know what's going on. Josh and Robin, if we didn't introduce Dragon ourselves. Dragon Slayer Princess on Instagram. Dragon, yeah. Any last comments you want to make? Um, we love y'all. Y'all are great. I'm from Boston, so I don't. That's cool as fuck, Massachusetts. That's where my grandma lives right we now. We love everyone. We're from around the country. Yeah. Capital. Everyone, you. Every, yeah, Albany. Everyone unites at Rutgers. Biggest southern city in the country, Miami, Miami Florida. <laughs> you already know what's happening. We love the crypt, New Jersey. Get lit. Yeah. You know what's happening. Very, very excited. Nice. <laughs> Okay, so I always heard about the crypt. Um, being a Rucker student, you just hear about the crypt. Oh, you hear the crypt. You hear other places for like m- music and stuff. Um, it's just a place for to like meet people. I, I like I like basement shows better than parties. Like frat parties suck. So. So it's just like I like the live music and just meeting cool people. So that's. And you tend to find a lot more cool people at basement shows rather than frat parties. If that makes sense. Definitely. So. Today specifically, um, we saw the flyer on Instagram, and I was like, you know, might as well just go. Um, so yeah, and yeah, brought some cool people along with me. It's fun to bring friends, fun to meet friends. Gabagool. So. Gabagool. I love the name Gabagool. Yeah, we, I, I really, I, I, I like the name Gabagool. Um, but yeah, uh, one band I do really like is Something Odd, I believe is their name. Uh, they're kind of local. Um, they're one of my favorites. Uh, Daddy's Closet also plays here frequently. She's, I mean, they're amazing. I love them. Um, but yeah. Because in New York, it's more like ravey scene, which I also love. But I feel like here specifically, like, you met, you meet cool people, whether they're in the band or they're just here to, like, have a good time. In my eyes, I see as a record student, it's definitely one of kind of the main things about Rutgers. You know, the party scene, you hear a lot about it. But the art scene is also very prevalent here. I met so many cool people here um, that are very involved with art, and it's been so amazing to see all of their creations. I went to like a there's art shows um, that Mason Gross has, Mason Gross, uh, the art the art school. So super cool stuff. Um, so unfortunately, I'm not musically gifted at all. Um, I don't even know what a note is or a chord. I don't know any of that. So not me, not me personally. Um, I mean, I play drums, but I'm not in a band or anything. So. What, what about art? You don't even have to do music. I mean, I dye my hair. I don't think that's art, but... <laughs> You're a hairdresser, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I love singing, and I'm, like, learning um, piano and keyboard, so that's... I think that's, like, part of the arts. Yeah. Yeah, but I feel like it would be... If I were musically inclined, I feel like definitely this would be a kind of a place to, like grow if that makes sense i would join a band here there's so um so i feel like personally as like a young musician if i were i feel like this is definitely the place to like where i could grow and like prosper if that makes sense yeah, i have a question for you do you do you know if like trash are local or are they traveling 
trash is from Missouri. Missouri, really? Cool. That's really cool. Really? Nice. Yeah, that's really awesome. I also love the f that fact Rutgers is full of like local bands that are like students primarily, but there's also like cool bands that come to like, travel. Like that's really cool. Um, Missouri's like a long way. Like where have you guys been so far? So the uh, tour started in Virginia on Thursday night, and then Friday last night we were in Philly. So tonight we're like here. Tomorrow we're in Brooklyn. Monday is Connecticut. Uh, Tuesday is Providence, Rhode Island. Fuck, I'm from Rhode Island. Yo, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I feel like this is a very cool thing that you're doing. Um, I feel like Rutgers is definitely the place to be um, for the music scene. The music scene is so amazing. The art scene is really amazing here. Um, I love the show. I love this venue, uh, the Crypt. Um, we're all very cool people, very cool stuff, doing cool things. And yeah, um, you know. You really have to keep the arts and music in general alive, um, and you do it through these kind of things, you know, venues, uh, college parties, stuff like that. I feel like it's very imperative for creative use, youths, youth, the youths of creativity. I don't know the word, but yeah, just to allow a space for them to thrive and prosper and just have fun, um, get people introduced to art and music and stuff. So. Yeah. Final thoughts? Hmm. I guess music, move your body, live music all the way, that's it. <laughs> and that's it, alright. Thoughts are good? Yeah, cool. What brought me to the venue today was Faith. Honestly, Destiny brought me here. So I have a lot of friends in the venue um, and like this, not even in the venue in the scene. So I know, I know the people who live at the house. So coming to the venue is like uh, a very big social event to me. Any show in New Brunswick, like it's always a good time for me. I always just feel like, I always feel like I'm at home here. To me, the crypt is the place where I get lit. It's the place where I get fucked up beyond recognition. It's the place where I go to when I don't want to remember anyone's name. I just want to go there to lose a sense of reality. Friends feel like family when you're so far away from home here in school. And honestly, you meet some of the best people out here, for real. Where's the tears? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to yes. Buban and Josh. I love you guys. <laughs> Shout, out, Shout, out. Shout out to Josh. Mubon. Don't forget Patrick. Patrick. Oh yeah, Pat. Pat, Patrick, especially yeah, Pat. Did you come to see a specific band in particular? Okay, I'm not gonna lie, Moose Creek Park. I saw them. I saw them on the fucking the flyer. And we've seen them before, many, like we didn't just see them. We yeah, we didn't. Yeah, we didn't just them. see them. We hosted them. We hosted most like most week party before. At the big dip, the big dip. it was great. Mm, I was here to see Gaba Gaba Cool. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> of course. Well, I used to be more involved. Uh, I like graphic design stuff. Anyone who flyers, hit me up for real. But. Yeah. The man. My eyes underscore O underscore T underscore M underscore R. <laughs> Every big dip flyer was created by this man. Scores, you're there. You're at my page. Trust. But the so I run a blog called the Backstair Blog, and um, I've been a manager in and out of the scene for about almost two years now, about a year and a half where I am now. Uh, so, um, I've been in and out of like managing bands, I've helped bands run shows, I've helped Josh run shows at the Crypt before. Chamber 45. It was chamb Chamber 43! I booked a show, I booked a full show and ran a show by myself at Chamber 43. Uh, so I've been in and out of booking shows and managing bands and stuff in the scene. So I feel like this is somewhere that I feel very, very home at. 
but I very much like it here, and I very like I very much like being behind the scenes at it too. Like not even just like I've tried to be a lead singer in a band, and I've also done stuff behind the scenes. So like either way, it's always uh, Patrick is nodding at me right now. But <laughs> but either way, like it's always like felt like somewhere like I belong, and like it's it's really nice to feel like somewhere you belong, and also like have a place behind the scenes in front of um, an area. So. Shout out to Good Way Studios <laughs> for being real as fuck. Um, personally, I'm from like Jackson, New Jersey, which is like very rural and like I don't know. Going up there, I felt yeah, very, very haw and like growing up there, there wasn't like a lot of people who express themselves in the ways that I've seen here. And genuinely, I see like I guess like I see like a, a blooming art community here because there's really a space for everyone. You want to animate, so you can find someone who wants like to help you out. Like just genuinely, people out there, they're all looking for the same things that you're looking for. You know, you're not as alone as you think you are, especially in this art scene that we have out here in New Brunswick. So uh, I grew up in Central Florida, so it was very conservative. Everyone was kind of like very close-minded where I grew up at. So I feel like after moving up to New Jersey and specifically being in New Brunswick, like I felt like I genuinely found my place to be, found a place to um, grow as a person, to like find where um, I belong. So like this has genuinely been like a place to like find who I am. And so it's been very helpful in like finding who I am as a person and like genuinely growing my personality outside of who I was in Florida, because in Florida, like, there's only as there's only so much alt you can be growing up in. Yeah, everyone's laughing. So there's only so much alt you can be in Central Florida, and um, it's very it's been very helpful to me growing myself as a person to like find a community that I fit in and that everyone accepts me and I can say whatever I want and be whoever I want and have. The views that I like, put, like not to bring political stuff into it, but like to have like the political political views I have and have everyone agree with me. It's nice to be in a community that everyone like feels the same way that I feel, and to like have the same views as I have, and like say have the same personalities and interests where I didn't have that growing up. And also, Joanna's here from what twenty minutes away. Like you still you still pull up, and you're not even like from around here. Like yeah. Always. Whenever there's, an, whenever there's an event here, I'm always here. It's not just the locals. People <laughs> people not, come from locals. far. People come from far. It's not just New Brunswick, okay? It's it's like <laughs> fucking... <laughs> yo, shout, out, shout out to Amboy, yo. Amboy, fucking North Brunswick. <laughs> well, <laughs> yo, where are you from? Franklin yo, Park, bro. Franklin Park. From Franklin Park everywhere. From everywhere. Damn, I was gonna say something, but I completely <laughs> forgot. But Isabel, I know you're not Yo. here, Yo. but I love you so much, Yo. and I, <laughs> I wish you were here. <laughs> um, Yo, for, sh shit. Shout out to the light blue American spirits, by the <laughs> way. <laughs> light blue is the way to go. I'm not gonna lie. Come on, black. Fuck the black. black. Fuck the black. black. I'm not gonna lie. Fuck the black. Light blue is the way to go. On, <laughs> These things last forever. They're all natural, so they're healthy. They help you. <laughs> they're so healthy for you. Any final thoughts? Switch spots with me. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I know. I know Josh. So. Okay. Wait. Yeah. I get it. Patrick doesn't say. So. Uh, so final thoughts would be is I very much found a community here. Uh, I love coming to shows. This is probably one of the safest places that I feel in the entire world. Um, so it's a very it's a very safe, comfortable space. Those are my final thoughts is that this is one of the probably best venues in the area because not only have I known the people here for so long but I've just like because I've known them it just makes it a lot more easier and more comfortable to come to and I feel like it should be more comfortable to come for a lot of people and as much as like I should on it be being a frat party pregame I do wish that more people were interested in the music so the what brought me to the venue um Meeting up with some friends, just uh, I, I heard uh, Tilt and uh, Pondview, basically the same same guys. Uh, they were gonna be here, and uh, 
you know, when uh, Mr. Mr. Colby, Mr. Uh, Captain Crunchback here, when he tells you to come do a show, you show up. Uh, who were you here to yeah, see? Who was I here to see? Uh, I was here to see Tilt and Pondview. Uh, mainly because I, I've heard of them and I know about them. Um, aside from that, though, uh, Trash and uh, and uh, Moose Creek, they killed it. You know, great, absolutely great killer show. <laughs> have you been to this music venue before? I have, I have. I've been here once on a Halloween before um, for a Halloween party kind of deal. They had um, they had a whole lineup. Um, don't quote me on the lineup. <laughs> I used to frequent Crunch House a lot. I know they're closed down now. It, it used for for those that don't know, it was a local venue in uh, in West Haven, uh, Connecticut, right? Um, you know, great place, great people. You know, I just I love the atmosphere of that place. And you know, if if uh, I, I get that at other places as well. You know, it's it's a great uh, great vibe, uh, just all around. I think the scene is very much alive. Um, I think that. Uh, a lot of um, a lot of bands right now have uh, have kind of a cult following with them. So um, when you in expect, um, I don't want to name drop anybody. When you expect certain people, their group is they're gonna be there, right? And that's a great time, great people. So expectations, mosh pits, gotta be a mosh pit, absolutely. If there's not a mosh pit, I'll start it. So. Have you enjoyed this show? Absolutely. Yeah, it was a great time. Um, good vibes, good people all around, you know. Um, I, one of the good things about coming to a venue like this is, you know, uh, in between sets, you, you get to meet people, you get to talk to people. It's a, it's a good time all around. Um, all right, any final comments you want to put, put out about the Connecticut scene? <laughs> Yo, this is official shit right here. Oh, 
Studios, yeah. yeah, you already know. You already know. Good way studios. You already know what's happening.